Here we're going to be looking at accrual basis accounting and how it works. Now in accounting you have two methods to choose from, either the cash basis or the accrual basis. Now with the cash basis you recognize your revenues and expenses when the cash is actually received or the cash is actually paid. Now with accrual accounting this is where you allocate your revenues and expenses to the period in which they actually occur. And with accrual accounting you're going to have a timing difference here between our cash receipts and our cash payments with what we recognize here as revenue and expenses on the income statement. Now in accrual accounting we use four basic accounts here to allocate these revenues and expenses. And for our liabilities here in the balance sheet they'd be our unearned revenue or what we call deferred revenues and our accounts payable or what we would refer to as accrued expenses. And then as our assets here in the balance sheet we use our accounts receivable or what we call our accrued, re accrued revenue. And then we have our inventory and prepaid expenses here which we would refer to as a de deferred expense. Okay, what I'll do here is go through these four basic accrual accounts. And for a better understanding of how these accrual accounts work, I'll make the comparison between the timing of the cash receipts and payments versus recognition of the revenue and expenses. And I'll also show how the accrual basis is calculated for each of these accounts. Okay, let's look at our revenue accounts. And we'll start with our unearned revenue, which is a liability on the balance sheet. And this is where we receive a cash payment in advance of doing any work. And let's say we received this, a $6,000 cash advance here. So we credit our unearned revenue for $6,000, and then we debit or increase our cash account here for $6,000. So you could see here that we earn less revenue than the cash we received. Matter of fact, we didn't uh, earn any revenue here all we had was a cash transaction. And if we look at this on, I try to determine our accrual basis. Uh, let's say we had a $100,000 cash basis here. We'd have to subtract out this $6,000 here from it because we hadn't recognized it as revenue over here. So our accrual basis for the revenue here would be $94,000. Now let's look at the case here. We actually earned $2,000 worth of this revenue here. So we debit or decrease our unearned revenue for $2,000 and then we'd recognize it here or credit our revenue uh, on the income statement for $2,000. So this is where we earn more revenue than the cash we received. Matter of fact, we didn't receive any cash at this point. All we did is recognize the revenue. So if we're going to determine our accrual basis here for this revenue, we look at our cash basis of $100,000 for the revenue, and then we'd have to add in this extra revenue that we recognized of $2,000 to it. So our accrual basis would be $102,000. Okay, let's look at our accounts receivable, which is an asset on the balance sheet. And this is where we earn some revenue in advance of receiving any payment for this revenue. So let's look at the case here where we earn $50,000 in our accounts receivable. So we debit our accounts receivable for $50,000, and then we'd go and we'd credit or increase our revenue here on our income statement, or we recognize $50,000 worth of that revenue. And this is the case here where we accrued more revenue than the cash we received. Matter of fact, we didn't receive any cash, but we did accrue $50,000 worth of the revenue. So if we're going to determine our accrual basis for this revenue, we'd have to take the $100,000 cash basis, and then we'd have to add this extra $50,000 worth of revenue to it, and then our accrual basis would be $150,000. Now let's look at where we actually received the $10,000 cash payment against this accounts receivable. So we'd credit our accounts receivable to $10,000, and then we'd debit or increase our cash for that payment here of $10,000. Now this is the case here where we accrued less revenue than the cash we received. Matter of fact, we didn't accrue any revenue at this time. All we did is have this cash payment. So if we're going to determine our accrual basis for this revenue, let's say we had a $100,000 cash basis, we'd have to subtract this $10,000 because we hadn't recognized it here as a revenue. And so we subtract the $10,000 from our cash basis of $100,000, and then we'd have an accrual basis here of $90,000 for our revenue. So in both cases here for our unearned revenue and our accounts receivable, we have a timing difference here between our cash receipts and what we recognize here as revenues on our income statement. 
Okay, let's look at our expenses. Now we'll start with our accounts payable, which is a liability on the balance sheet. Now this is where we incur an expense in advance of making any payments. So let's say we incurred expense here of $15,000. So we credit our, our accounts payable for $15,000 and then we go and we debit or increase our expenses here on the income statement for $15,000. So we recognize $15,000 worth of expense here. Now this is the case where we accrued more expense than the cash that was paid. So actually we didn't pay any cash but we accrued the expense here of $15,000. So if we were going to uh, calculate our accrual basis we would take our cash basis say it was $100,000 here and then we'd have to add to it this extra $15,000 of expense. So our accrual basis would be $150 thousand dollars for our expense. Now looking at the case here where we had a made a cash payment of five thousand dollars against this accounts payable. So we debit our accounts payable for five thousand dollars and then we credit or reduce our cash here for five thousand dollars. Now this is the case here where we accrued less expense than the cash paid. Matter of fact we didn't we didn't accrue any expense but we had a cash payment here. So if we're calculating our accrual basis here for an expense. Let's say our cash basis was $100,000. Then we'd have to subtract this $5,000 payment here since it wasn't recognized as an expense. So our accrual basis would be uh, the $100,000 less this $5,000 payment or it would be $95,000. Okay, let's look at our inventory or prepaid expenses, which are assets on the balance sheet. And this is where we pay for something in advance of using it. So let's look, for example, here where we uh, purchase $20,000 worth of inventory. So we debit or increase our inventory for that $20,000, and then we credit or reduce our cash for that $20,000 worth of inventory we purchased. So this is the case here where we, where we use less inventory than the cash that was paid. Matter of fact, we didn't recognize any inventory as an expense here, but we did recognize a cash payment. So if we're going to determine our cash or our accrual basis for this inventory or this expense of this inventory, we take say a hundred thousand dollar cash basis and then we'd have to subtract this twenty thousand dollar payment here for the inventory since it wasn't recognized as an expense over here on our income statement and then our, our accrual basis would be eighty thousand dollars. Now let's look at where we actually used $12,000 worth of this inventory. So we credit or reduce our inventory for $12,000 and we debit or increase our expenses here in the income statement for $12,000. Now this is the case here where we used more inventory than the cash that was paid. Matter of fact we didn't pay any cash but we did uh, recognize this inventory as an expense. So if we're going to determine our accrual basis for this inventory expense, we'd say our cash basis was $100,000. Then we'd have to add this extra $12,000 worth of expense to it. So our accrual basis would be $112,000. So in either case here for inventory as prepaid expenses or our accounts payable, we had a timing difference here between our cash payments that we made and our expenses that we recognized here on our income statement. Okay, to summarize, using a cash basis accounting, we recognize revenue and expenses only when we actually receive cash and we actually pay cash. Now, when we're using the accrual basis accounting, we use these asset and liability accounts here on the balance sheet so that we can allocate our revenue and expenses to the period in which they actually occur. Now, with the accrual basis accounting, we have a timing difference here between our cash receipts in our cash payments with what we recognize here as revenue and expenses here on our income statement.